Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome. I am so excited to introduce and have you meet an amazing woman that I have had the opportunity to get to know over the past several months. And her name is Molly Trotter. She is a former television news anchor. Yes, she's famous. (laughs) Um, She has dedicated her life's work to telling other people's stories and giving them a platform for their voice to be heard. After she left the news industry, oh, did you just get shocked? Yes, she left the news industry. She found her calling in the world of digital marketing, helping coaches and consultants through on-camera coaching, plus increasing their influence and conversions through custom strategies to grow their business online with the Dream Factory team. Welcome, Molly. Hi, Kathy. So excited to be here. So I just noticed that you've got your last name um, hyphened, Trotter Gomez. So I only introduce you as Molly Trotter. Did I make a mistake there? No, you're fine. I have more of like a okay. stage name as Molly Trotter. And then I put Molly Trotter Gomez because I got married in 2020. So yeah, it can get confusing for people, but you are spot on. You're good to go. Well, congratulations on getting married in 2020. How did that go during COVID? I know we, well, when we got engaged, I looked at my husband, well, boy, fiance at the time. Right. And I was like, well, what are we going to do? And we've seen people just push back their weddings and we're like, I would be a bridezilla for sure. (laughs) I knew that (laughs) right off the the jump. So I was like, we go to our pastor at church that Sunday and he's just like, well, a lot of people are having a quick little wedding and a big reception next year. So we gathered friends and family um, and we had maybe like 35 people on a beach here in California. It was free, mind you, no setup, no sound, no chairs. Just come to the beach as you are 20, 30 minutes. And then we ate afterwards. It was beautiful. It was simple. And then we were like, hey, let's do the reception. And now we're actually going to take that money for the reception and put it into hopefully buying our first home this year. So we've done it so not traditionally, but it works for us. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, our friends and family, they get it. And we're just like, well, we started non-traditional. Let's just keep it going. And we really want a home. So that's really important. Well, I will tell you that I. Um, I actually, I have been married three times. I had three weddings and my favorite one was like the one you just had. Mm -hmm. I've had the big one. That was my first one. I had a middle size one. That was my second one. And my third one, my uh, fiance at the time, and I went to Jamaica and we got married on the beach there in white shorts and a white top. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was so fabulous. So I'm with you and we saved a ton of money. Oh my gosh. Like you're my about. parents were like, yeah. well, thank you for, cause I'm the only girl in our family. They're like, well, thank you for saving us all this money here. We'll just give this to you for your first home. I'm like, I am not mad about that. Like that sounds, yeah, weird. that's awesome. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I saved yeah. you guys so much, but more importantly, I just didn't want to wait to marry my best friend and go through all of this ups Aww. and downs. And when you look at like how much weddings really cost and what goes into them, um, I'm helping oh my, my cousin God. to her wedding this year, all the festivities. I'm like, had so much time and so much money and my logic brain kicks in. And that, I mean, that's for some people. Right. And I thought that was going to be for me right. when 2020 hit. I was like, you know what? I'm, I unmarried every single idea that I had for my own wedding because what was most important was marrying my best friend and getting that life started together rather than waiting for the world to open up. And we're still waiting. <laughs> um, maybe by the time this airs, maybe it's opened up a little bit, hopefully, but yeah, yeah. it's just crazy. So I, I, we went for it and we're super, you know, just stoked with, doing that and what we've been able to create so far. Yeah. And where in California do you live? I live in Orange County. So I, I like to, I'm biased, mm-hmm. like the best part. So you get the great beaches here. Um, it's beautiful mm-hmm. here. 
And yeah, Newport beach is where we got married. And that's my favorite beach in the world. I was like, well, look at all this line up, mm-hmm. you know, we, just, yeah. we came, we like, like you, it was like a, I found this dress online for like $200, found these little, like, you know, cute little sandals. My husband went to, I don't know, mm-hmm. Banana Republic, bought his outfit. Like I'm telling you, it was like <laughs> the cheapest thing, but it was yeah. more like, Hey, what's going to work for us? Cause I had to plan it in four weeks. Right. So, oh man, planning a wedding in four weeks, even that small, still a little stressful, but it was worth it. And especially during COVID that, that made it even more stressful, I'm sure. But that, that just sounds to me, that sounds like a dream wedding. Um, And you're right. I mean, I'm happy for people, whatever level wedding they want. I I feel like I'm lucky. I've had three options, three (laughs) different ways to have a wedding, (laughs) but just so you know, you're, you're probably in for really good luck, especially since he's your best friend, because my first two marriages didn't last very long, just a couple of years each. This one I'm on 26 years now. Oh, I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure you're going to have great success like that too. Thank you. So um, before we go forward, I just have to take a step back because um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you might want to go look because Molly looks beautiful, but could you please hold your nails up? Cause they keep flashing through and those things are gorgeous. Oh my. Metallic. They call it a mirror effect. And so I have a photo shoot this weekend and I'm like, these are so fun, but everybody's like, what? Oh my God. They're gorgeous. I'm not getting, and that color on you, every, you know, your lipstick, your top, your hair, your nails, everything. That is amazing. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Um, You know, I'm not even that big into nails. But when somebody has gorgeous nails, you just have to go, what were those? <laughs> it's like all the headpieces you wear. You. I'm like, I love your head headpiece <laughs> choice of the day. Like, it's fun. It's funky. It's personality. You know, it's great. It's your accent piece. These are my little accent pieces. That's right. That's right. We all have to have an accent piece. Um, so. Back to business. No, we don't ever have to actually get serious. You know, me and you, we can talk all day long. So Molly, tell us about your story. I mean, I know when, when people like me hear that you were a television news anchor, you're like, wow, you know, uh, that's a really prestigious job. So how, how did that go? How'd you get there? And then what happened to make you step back from that and go into something different? I remember in high school, I was always that girl, like Friday night football games. I'm like, I see the news camera and I'm just like, how do I get on TV? I'd be the one to uh, get the the a section of students to paint our bodies all in school colors. We'd get to the station. <laughs> like I was that person. And then I was really lucky because my high school in Hillsborough, Oregon, it was a year old when I started going to it. And it actually had like a broadcast center where they had like morning news announcements. And I loved that. So I got integrated with that and just, it really intrigued me. And one, I'll, I'm an adrenaline junkie where like, okay, being on TV, that's a good adrenaline. That's fun. But then also telling the underdog story. There's a lot of stories out there that need to be told. And I was like, this is a great way to do it. So I, you know, do everything that I can to get my foot in the door and I get my foot in the door. And then two years into it, I'm just like, gosh, like the content's depressing. The money's terrible. The people in there are just so sad and toxic. I'm like, what is this? And if you can imagine like a wax candle and it's lit and, you know, when you're walking with it, it's, you know, almost going to blow out because the wind, everybody's just like trying to blow out my light and I'm trying to protect it everywhere I can, because I'm like, this is what I really want to do. I want to tell people stories, but then I had a news anchor or not news anchor news director after news director. Tell me not like that. Like we want you to do hard news, like car crashes, death, you know, all this like depressing stuff. And I'm like, can we go do something a little bit more lighthearted to like put some happiness back into people? So long story short, I got put in so many different situations where I was a target, where there'd be a murder on the loose. I'm by myself running my own camera, going live by myself. And there's somebody out there that just killed someone. And they're like, yeah, no, you don't need anybody to go with you. You'll be fine. There's police around there. I'm like, there's police that are trying to find this person. I have a bright light on my face, basically saying here, come get me. You know, you could take me as a That's hostage crazy. if you want. When you oh think my of gosh. it on the back end, you're like, this was so ridiculous. And I remember one particular story. I'm telling some of these just kind of give you guys some context. Oh, uh, I, I love these. Keep them coming. I love <laughs> you're a great storyteller, by the way. Oh, uh, thank you. 
I remember there was one particular instance where there was a person that shot up this house, not once, but twice in a matter of weeks. So at the six o'clock, they wanted me to go out there and go live. I'm by myself, mind you, running my own camera. No, I did not have a camera person to help me most of the time. I had to do it all. They called it an MMJ, a multimedia journalist. So in, in my like early 20s, I'm out there by myself. And I remember going live on the six o'clock and somebody's coming up to me, cursing at me right before we go live. And I have my producer in my ear being like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go live because I think I'm being threatened right now. They stop, I go live because my producer's like, stay there, stay there, we need you there. They were more worried about me staying in that slot for them to go on TV than my safety. Then your safety. Then I go back to the station. They're like, we need you to go back there out there for the 11. And I look at my news director, mind you, this guy's like in his late seventies. And I said, I'm not going back out there. I'm 23 years old and I am not putting myself out there without somebody going with me. They're like, well, we're asking you to do it. I'm like, you can find somebody else because I value my life rather than what just happened at 11 o'clock on a street where you have not found this guy and he shot up this home twice. Like, come on now in a bad neighborhood, obviously. And he comes back out an hour later. He's like, yeah, you're right. You shouldn't go out there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the fact that a 23 year old had to tell a 70 plus year old what to do, it yeah. just it blew my mind. So I ended up actually um, a couple stations later, end up actually getting fired from the news because I put up a transformation photo of like a before and after of a health transformation that I had. And they didn't like that. And I said, okay, like you guys want to put my How life in danger. Could you? How you guys want to show something me? positive. <laughs> right. You want to fire me for wanting to, you know, inspire people. And I said, okay, whatever. I don't think you have grounds to fire me. But at that time, when they finally let me go, I just felt this burden lift. And I was like, all right, this is my exit. Like I knew I was going to have to get out at some point, but this was my exit. And could I have fought that? Sure. But at the end of the day, why would you want to build a legacy with something so depressing? And I think everybody listening or watching this will know the news is depressing. We can all agree on that. And what I loved is even during that time of being in the news, I really got into social media branding for myself, social selling, helping other people build their brands. And I just love it because on social media, you can show up however you want. And I always encourage people to show up authentically to who you are, not who somebody else is trying to make you to be. And that was me in the news. They were trying to make me into something I wasn't. Anytime I tried to show personality, they said, no, not like that. And I was like, Mm. no, this is not happening. So mm-hmm. that's what transitioned me into the digital marketing spaces because I love social media. I love being able to help people use it for good. And then when I saw the overall impact that the digital marketing space has had so far, but really it has yet to explode of helping people really be able to get their story out there, their businesses out there, their services, and really help people grow in relationships, business, personal corporate, whatever that may be. I just love that. I mean, you could literally leverage so much by sitting here at your desk with your computer with some Wi-Fi. I mean, you can do so many things. So um, as you mentioned in my bio, uh, because of my background in news, I help people get their clarity and confidence on camera with video marketing. How can you tell your story out there efficiently to be able to attract more leads, more engagement, and just have people really get to know you? Because a lot can be said through a video rather than just a post or something stagnant. And then our team, the Dream Factory, that's where the expansion of the digital marketing space, as I just mentioned, is I wanted to learn how could I leverage my skill sets as well as other people like copywriters, ads managers, um, designers, people like that. I don't want to learn how to do that stuff. So how can I leverage what they do and leverage what I do? So I ended up um, coming together with this team called the Dream Factory, where we help service-based entrepreneurs really be able to get the team on the back end to do the stuff that they're not wanting to be an expert in. The copywriting, the ads, the funnels, the design. So the words, the wording and the aesthetic to really be able to get more visibility and attract more people into their business is, uh, and having an integrous team on the back end to do that, so important. Because a lot of coaches don't get into their business to do that techie stuff, right? Like I'm not Hmm. the best copywriter. I don't know any coaches. I don't know any coaches who get into business to do that. (laughs) No, they're like, I want to help people in this area. And that's what I want to do. So we want them to focus on that area. And that's your zone of genius. Hire out the rest that form a delegation. So I know that's a really roundabout way. Normally I don't go into too much detail with the new stuff, but I knew you were intrigued. And then, oh, you know, I love it. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it's insane. Cause most people like yourself are, why would you ever get out of that? Well, in my life, I put in danger so many times and there's a lot of things I can't unsee. And it also dehumanized me to a point where it took years to get that back, to just have normal Mm. conversations. Cause I'd come home from work and talk to a friend or, you know, if a boyfriend at the time or whatever, and Hey, how was your day? And my conversations would be something like this. 
oh, you know, it was cool. Like, you know, I, I was on the scene of like a six car pileup and a couple people died and I was up here. Da, da, da. And like, people are like, wait, what? Like, excuse me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let me take a step back here. Like that was normal to me. That's a problem, yeah. you know? And so that I'm like, I don't want to talk about that. So social media, depending on who you follow, depending on how you use it is such a a gift and such a gem. And I love to be able to show that side to people so they can really use it for their benefit to build their legacy and then help impact others. I love that. And um, I think I might have shared this with you before, but I've never talked about this on the podcast. So um, my nephew, my sister's boy is boy. He's a grown man with two kids of his own. Um, <laughs> he is the evening news anchor for CBS in St. Louis at the St. Louis station. And as he was coming before he became the evening news anchor, as he was coming up, um, he was there too. And I would see him out doing some of these dangerous things that you're talking about. And I call my sister, is he okay? I mean, my husband and I are literally watching cause he's an amazing man my nephew is. And we're literally watching it going, Oh my God. Oh my God. Is he okay? Is he okay? Look what he's having to watch. And so, you know, I know from that now, a, just a little bit of what you were feeling because just watching it from home. And then the other thing that you're saying about news being really negative, how many people do we all know? Who's like, I'm taking a break from the news because it is just <laughs> too depressing. Yeah. I definitely yeah, I think do. Most people Take have. That. It's like, I tell people now I'm yeah. like, look, from somebody who's been in it, I've done several lives on this and I swear I could probably do one a week and I'll hit different people every time. It's like, look, they're brainwashing you to think a certain way. You know, you have to think for yourself. Oh Don't go to them to be like, so many people go to the news and like that, what they say is gold. No, yes. it's biased. Like there's so many, I remember there was times I'd go into a news director's office and they said, Hey, why did you tell the story like this before it aired? I'm like, cause that's what happened. They're like, well, let's change this a little bit because we want this to be the angle. I'm like, that's not what happened. And then I said, I'm not going to damage my credibility because you want a different angle to get more viewers that don't even pay my salary. That is garbage anyway. So no. Right. And so I, I stood up for myself enough, which probably led to me getting fired, but that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you find your people and I'm not going to like damage who I am, my integrity, because somebody wants a few more right. viewers off of something that's not true. So, so good of you though, to like go to your nephew and be like, Hey, are you okay? I feel like people don't yeah. do that enough. You know, people don't check in on people enough and really take the time to check in. Not like, Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Oh, I hate that whole like song and dance. It drives me nuts. <laughs> it's like, take the time to really set some time out in the week. I do this on the weekends and be like, Hey, I'm just checking in. Like, really? How are you? Oh, I'm good. No, like really yeah. like what's going on. And, and then they're like, whoa, oh, okay. You know, create that safe space, let people talk because people will have so much bottled up inside of them. And then they just, oh, nobody cares or it's not important. It really, it really does matter. It really does matter. And you, you have to take that time. So I love that you did that and you do that with your nephew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we absolutely do. And um, I also think, um, I love this topic that we're talking about here because I think a lot of us feel like we have to be really strong and we shouldn't reach out for help. Um, if somebody isn't reaching out to us, we shouldn't reach out to them. And if they do reach out to us that we should just fine, fine. And I really want people to tell me what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to tell people that care about me what's really going on. How about you, Molly? Yes. I, um, a way that my husband and I actually do that is we do a live every Monday at 6 PM on my Facebook, um, called the God given couples. So we talk about relationships. We talk about entrepreneurship because he's 26, I'm 31, but in that age gap, no one's talking about dating and relationships. And we, we want to breathe hope back into people to really open up that space of like, okay, what's really going on with you or what's really happening or what are you stuck in that you need to get out of? Because relationships are the foundation of everything. To your point, if you have a bad relationship, that's going to leak into every area. If you have great relationships, that's going to like support every area. But you have to be able to get out and talk about it or at least be open to other ideas because so many of us just, yeah, we want to stay in our zone like and just not talk to people. We got it all together. I'll tell you, I got plenty of things. I got a laundry list of things that I would like to change and things <laughs> that are like, I don't really like what this is right now. But I get to trust the process and just keep pushing forward, but taking the time to either do self-reflection or reaching out to people and not waiting till it's too late. Because when you wait till it's too yeah. late, like 
then you're so far gone that it's just, you have to, you know, do so much catch up. And then sometimes people just brush that under the rug and never deal with it. And then just sits right. there. So yeah, that is yeah. such an important piece that society just skips over. Even in business, for example, yeah. they want to send out a hundred messages through a bot rather than maybe doing 10 to 20 messages of, Hey, I really see you. I appreciate what you're doing. I'd love to get to know you and maybe collaborate in this way or, you know, explore this idea and take the time. And so when people take the time, trust me, the money and the impact will be there, but they think, oh no, I got to, you know, do twice as many and, you know, get all these things in order to get ahead. There's a lot of strategy that people just skip over because they want to rush the process. Yeah. So thanks for going there because um, I really feel like, and I'd love because you're deeper in the industry of social media and, and getting that, getting that information out there and helping people build those businesses. What do you see, what has shifted um, in recently? And I know a lot of shifted since COVID. I think things have continued to shift throughout COVID as as things have changed and they're going to be shifting again as we reopen. Um, so what do you see that shifted and what isn't working anymore and what is working? Mm, I would say what isn't working anymore is people wanting to, I saw a really good quote the other day to this point where it's like, until you get your voice, don't hire it out until you get your brand, Ooh. until you get like who you yes. are. Stop trying to hire the VA or the, this person or that person, the assistant stuff on the back end. They're never going to help you get there. You have to be able to discover that or at least hire somebody to pull that out of you to really bring that clarity. What's not working is so many people want to hire out first and then discover who they are second. No, 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 no. Yes. You got to discover who are you, what's the result you want to give to people and then be able to get the team. The one thing about the dream factory is we, we will turn down people because we want to work with people that usually are in the six figure mark and above, or you can hit six figures organically. Uh, but then they, they have a process, they have something proven, and then we can help expedite those results on the back end through, you know, their visibility tools. But so many people want to skip that part. They want to skip the hard work. It's, you have to put that work in being an entrepreneur is not easy by any means, but there are set pieces of freedom that you can plug in there when you follow the process. So it's not working just to sum it up is people want to just rush it. They want to rush it. They want to rush it. What is working is rapport building, building relationships, taking that time. I have, um, a strategy, if you will, on Instagram that I love using, but I just love talking to people in general. So I created this, or we as a team created this strategy where I'll reach out to people that I like, that I'm like, okay, they're doing great. They're a business coach, relationship coach, sales coach, whatever. And I want to highlight them on my Instagram. I want them for 20 minutes to talk all about whatever value that they want to chat about, to be able to give that to my audience and then on the back end, we'll have um, a funnel, which is a swipe up in Instagram. They'll go to their masterclass or their podcast or whatever. So people can get to know them because that 20 minutes is just enough where people will stay on, but then they want a little bit more. Sometimes people just do mm -hmm. it too long and then they jump off. So on the, like at that point, we've gone through a pre-interview call where I've gotten to know them, the, the person behind the profiles, I like to call it. I gave them 20 minutes on my show, plus had an extra way for people to go contact them. Then on that back end, you know, seeing if there's some kind of synergy, a partnership of a collaboration, or maybe they're looking for a team and Dream Factory is a good fit. But I took that much time to pour into them that it's turned into honestly a great business strategy and, you know, been able to close multiple, multiple six figures just myself, millions of dollars as a team with our team doing this. But most importantly, I get to talk to people that I want to talk to. I get to put people out there that are doing great things and I get to highlight them and really collaborate with them. And then you never know if there's something on the back end where, Oh, maybe I need what they have or they need what I have. And so it's, it's putting people out there, collab collaboration over competition. That's what's working is collaborating with people. And you're going to have a way higher percentage of closing deals on the back end Cause you took that time to really be able to put somebody else out there and highlight them. Because again, um, like Instagram, for example, the reason I'm on there is because I just love, I love Instagram, first of all, but then just all the, the video aspects and the lives and interactions you can get is really great. And uh, people love to talk about themselves. Come on, let's be honest. So building that relationship is what's working. And I just don't see people valuing the time it takes to really make that happen. 
I absolutely agree with you. And I think it's always been important to build relationships, but never, I don't think, has it been as important as it is now because people are so hungry for real relationships because they have not had it for a year. Right. Yeah. They're, they're kind of, they're sick and tired of it. <laughs> they're so tired. Yeah. I'm just here in my office connecting with you know, all these people all over. And I'm, you know, in that regards to the pandemic, I'm, I'm grateful for it. I've connected with so many people all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, like, of course, here in the States, Canada, because like, there are no events to go to. So I'm creating my own in a sense, and just making it happen on my own. And so you get to be like, okay, I'm going to be intentional, make this happen. And just go after it and really be able to connect with people because, hey, maybe there's not a sale that happens on the front end, but you took that time with somebody. They're like, oh, you know what? I have a friend or I have somebody in my network that'd be a great fit for you. And because you took that time and you built that relationship, you never know what's going to happen on that back end. But just being a genuine person. I mean, gosh, like, let's just go back to, to basics here. Being a genuine, good human being of integrity. Like you said, people are craving that. They want that. And they want to know somebody's in their corner that has that. And uh, I tell you, you really, really walk your talk because you and I didn't know each other and you reached out to me and we've had several conversations now and you always truly take the time and you truly care. You've talked with my group uh, to give them some insights and now you're here on my podcast and I just really appreciate all of that. Yeah. So anybody listening to this, if you're like, Molly seems really cool and maybe I would like to learn more about her and work with her. Is she really real like this? Yeah, she's really real. So if you look at her and you go, um, so because sometimes I'm a little biased on this, um, I'm going to be honest with this. When somebody is as beautiful as you are and you are truly beautiful, Molly, both inside and out. And, And I know that. But sometimes when people are just so beautiful, I'm a little intimidated and I think, Why would they even want to talk with me? I'm a little lady. And then when, when I actually talked with you, you're, you're genuine and you are beautiful inside and out. And I know you take time with everyone. Thank you. Yeah. It's like, I want to be able to, I actually, I'm in this leadership course. A friend of mine put on this beta leadership course and I am going through and she had us actually write our obituary. And I'm like, this is the worst. And then, but then it's like, you think about what do you want to create? You know, what do you want people to say about you? And to your point, I'm like, I want really people to know that I really come from a place of love, like genuinity, authenticity, that I really, every single person that I came in contact with, I really genuinely like just care and appreciate them. We may not get to talk all the time, but they know that there's a genuine, like, Hey, if I can do anything to help you, let me know. And every single network or just group of people I've been into, there's always been, you know, at least a couple that I've been able to stay in contact with semi-closely over the years. And I really value that because when you find real people, real recognizes real, just like you and me, Kathy, you're a real person. When I, you know, first inter- uh, introduced myself to you and got to know you, I'm super grateful because you didn't have to put me in front of your, your network and have me on this podcast or take the time with me. Cause I know you're super busy and like really in love with what you do, but you did. And so that says a lot because time is the most valuable asset that we have. And when you take the time to, to give and to pour in and just, you know, love on somebody, make sure they feel seen, heard, and appreciated. Those three things cost you nothing, but mean everything to people. That is what's most important. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So I'm shift topics just a little bit. I was um, talking to a podcast guru yesterday and he believes, and I would love to hear what you think since you are from this industry, he believes that podcasts and Facebook lives and Instagram lives and all of those different um, modes are the new journalists, the new journalism. What do you think? I think they're spot on. I think, not that I think I know news stations, like here in LA, for example, ABC7 is a really popular station, KCAL9, like they pour so many resources into their lives and their social media because they're getting so many more people watching that than actually watching the news. So I think they're spot on with that. And yeah, we're going to see a huge shift here. I mean, So many people are just so tired of that same old song and dance. And what's great about it, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, LinkedIn, podcasting, YouTube, 
you get to be your own news station. What is important to you and what do you want to help people grow through? Really at the end of the day, you know, sure. Okay. If there's a murder on the loose or if there's a a carjacking, whatever, the news is going to pick that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's right. bad stuff. But then we glorify the bad stuff. So more bad stuff happens after that. Like, let's just think about it here. But if we're glorifying the good stuff, what would happen if that was more prevalent? Just something to yeah. think about. Right. Because when you said the news brainwashes you, uh, I, I literally told my husband that because he had gotten to the point um, like January of last year where um, I, I literally went to him and said, you're watching the news 24 seven and you've gotten brainwashed. All you can talk about now is everything horrible that's happening in the world. And that it's like a doomsday. Mm-hmm. This even before COVID hit. And I said, could you give it up? Could you stop watching the news for three months to see what happens? I said, you know, I'm not saying you can't watch like, you know, an hour a day to see what's going on because he's a news junkie, but to have it on 24 seven was really impacting him. Mm-hmm. And after he, he did it, which I really admire him for doing, he was no longer brainwashed. He was a happier person. We were, I was no longer having to listen to, you know, the whole world is coming to an end. So I, I totally agree with you. It truly is brainwashing. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what channel you watch. All of them are doing it. Yeah. So um, do you have advice for people who are, because not everybody's like you, Molly, you're very outgoing. You're so vivacious. And I'm sure that you love uh, getting, you know, on Facebook live on Instagram live, and you're so good at it. I know for sure that it, you don't have to be perfect at any of this in order to make an impact, because if you did, I would not be making any impact because, <laughs> because I, I am all about progress, not perfection, but there are still people out there who are like, Oh, I don't know exactly what to say. What if I, am um, an awe? What if I don't look beautiful? Um, you know, what if, what if, what if? And so they, they hide. I say they're in witness protection program. Mm. <laughs> so many are in that program nope. getting crowded now. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows they exist. Um, but yet they really have something to me that I believe is important that there are people in the world that need and need to know they exist. So any tips on how to get people out of the witness protection program? Yes. First of all, cling on to this phrase, start messy, just get started. Mm, go. I love that. Oh, go, 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 go. I, even now I've I tell people, please don't compare yourself to me because you're comparing your chapter one to somebody's chapter 100. I've been on like doing this kind of stuff for almost 10 years now. So I've had a lot of practice and even then I still mess up. I remember a time where I forgot something four times in a row, it came back and it left, it came back and it left, it came back and it left. <laughs> and I just started making fun of myself. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is great that this is live because it's a great learning moment. It's a teachable moment. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> honestly, to your point, this is why I got into on-camera coaching is what I call it, you know, helping people on video, getting that confidence and clarity, because I actually didn't want to get into that side of coaching. I had somebody literally beg me and pull me into it. And I said, okay, fine. And I'm so glad they did because now I'm just like, oh my gosh, the wool's been, you know, pulled back. And I see so many people just like you said, in the witness protection program, when they just need somebody like, you know, guiding them or, you know, you can do it yourself, but really being able to give that feedback of like, okay, where am I at? What do I like here? What do I not like here? How can I improve going forward? And a bless, uh, the best place to start is finding somebody that you enjoy their content. You enjoy what they put out. You enjoy them as a person, watch them and then reverse engineer it. How do you get to that point? You're never going to be perfect, but honestly, without me reverse engineering the social media game and putting my content out there over 10 years ago with somebody on social media now, uh, with, her name is Emily Vavro. Without me watching her so long ago, actually back in 2014, I would have never been where I am today because I didn't have anybody around me that had what I wanted. And I found somebody and then I still haven't even met her in person, mind you, which is so crazy. One day we will. But I love everything she put out there. I just reverse engineered it. Just love how she showed up. What kind of podcast is she listening to? What kind of mentorship? What, how, how much is she investing into her personal growth, business growth? A lot of people just expect it to come. No, a lot of people that really get there spend tens of thousands, sometimes multiple six figures into their personal investment, personal development, 
business development in order to shorten that learning curve. So when it comes to getting on video, of course, live is scary. There's no redo. You just go for it. But as you mentioned, Kathy, people love people that just show up who they are. Maybe a little scared, maybe a little nervous, and that's okay. Get through it, but just let the audience know, you know, being like, hey, I'm a little nervous or, you know, I'm not really sure where this is going to go, but this is my objective. This is what I really want to talk about. I'm coming from the heart. And just let people know you're genuinely just wanting to come from the heart. And the hardest part of that is going back and then watching it and being like, hey, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. Or, you know, you can oh my God, that is the hard part. That, oh, that is the worst. A picture of me just popped up that I was like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> yeah, and then I tough. just thought, you know what? It's me. It's me. Yeah. And that's what people want to see. They want to see it's you. They don't want you trying to be a version of Gary V or whoever, you know, you follow. <laughs> or they Molly want Trotter. To- <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't try to be me. Please don't. You know, I got plenty of flaws too. So at the end of the day, just be you and put yourself out there. But how I get people to really start to have a, you got a massive, like, okay, I got all these things I'm thinking about. How do you narrow it in? Just like finding a niche in your business. How do you narrow it in and target? So you know who you're speaking to, to a, a easy place to start on social media is, is what's your theme? What do you want people to come to your page for, to learn you know, do you want to be that friend, make that connection? You want to be the teacher or do you want to be that thought leader that has more like, like polarizing content, stuff that's going to really shift your way of thinking? Who do you want to be? And then, you know, what kind of content do you want to have in there? You know, for me, I talk about obviously on-camera confidence. I talk about the scaling your business with the team. Um, I also, you know, put a lot of like leadership and faith in the content that I do as well. People know that because I've had that consistency for years You get to find out, okay, what do you want to share? If you're a business coach, what makes you special as a business coach? What is your zone? You know, is it you have a killer strategy? Is it you have, you know, killer mindset coach? What is that? And then be able to speak on that. And you might be like, well, Molly, if I speak on it, no one's going to want to buy my program. Oh, yes, they will. Because they're going to see that you're putting it out there and you're giving. So by the time you're like, hey, I got this great deal or I have this, you know, special happening or whatever, or a masterclass, something free for them to get more information from you. It'll make it so much easier to do an upsell on the back end to whatever program you have, because you've already showed up for them. Showing up for people is the biggest part. So the on-camera part, yes, it's scary. Start messy, figure out what you want to talk about. And then from there, you know, um, ha, where are my sticky notes? I go through so many sticky notes. You should see my garbage can. It is insane of sticky notes, but I will literally around my ring light because lighting is important too. I have a ring light. I got it for like a hundred bucks on Amazon called the newer ring light. I swear I need a referral link. So I refer so many people over there, but it's your phone can sit in the middle and you have this gorgeous light around you that you can travel with, do whatever with. I'll put sticky notes around my ring light if I need help with a certain topic, but I'm not writing out the speech. I'm writing, okay, bullet point one, two, and three post and then that is such a great me. idea i never thought about doing that i have one of those newer ring lights too yeah i love and i that. never thought about doing that yeah and so it helps that people. is so funny that i didn't think about that <laughs> like, this i swear i go through so many sticky you notes. these things are my best friend they're all over my desk all over my whiteboard all over everywhere i'm a sticky note queen um but yeah just have something that can help you or even this and a lot of people get um They get kind of weird with this, but we do, we even did this on the news. Say if you had a notebook and you're talking, just being like, you know, okay, here's my topic, da, 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 have it in your hands. You know, I'm just referring to my notes here. Oh yeah. I really want to touch on that. Take them in it with you. Hey, I'm just referring to my notes here. Let me look here to make sure I'm staying on track. Oh yeah, there it is. And use notes or use stickies, have some support in there. And if you're watching, if you're not watching the, the video of this, like I'm having these pieces in my hand. (laughs) <laughs> because you're only human. Like you're going to think about, you have a topic, say you want to talk about, I don't know, leadership and you have A, B, and C, point A, B, and C. Well, your brain's probably also going to think, what am I having for dinner? I need to do the laundry. I need to blah, blah, blah. My oil change in my car. I don't know. And or your dog barks and all of a sudden you're like, oh, please stop barking. Yes. And so you have to have these points somewhere if you're not comfortable of like, you know, being able to stay on target because your brain's going to start thinking of all these other things Mm -hmm. to throw you off. So these are just little helpful pieces for you to really be able to, okay, here's my A, B, and C point. I'm going to get there. And then don't be so hard on yourself. Have grace in what it is that you're doing because so many people want to compare themselves to the news anchors, for example, 
Well, I'll tell you firsthand, they're probably great people, but so stiff. Like, this is John on the evening news. John, that's not relatable. How are you really? Like, it's dry, it drives me nuts. And so the more relatable you can be, even if you mess up, even if like whatever happens, like people love that because mm-hmm. that's relatable. They're like, you know what? I love that she just messed up right there. I can relate to Molly on that. So one thing that I always try to find is how can I be more relatable to other people? Because I know sometimes I'm not because of all the experience I've had, but how do I bring it back to be relatable? So people, more people can connect with me. Cause that's more important than having authority is important as well. Being that authority figure is great, but like I want to be relatable too. I want people to be like, oh, I'd love to have dinner with Molly or go hang out with Molly. Like she's somebody like I enjoy, you know? Well, you have succeeded at that. You have absolutely succeeded at that. I find that the authority thing um, can come without any perfection when you come across as knowledgeable Mm. and you're willing to share that knowledge. Do you agree? The author- yes, absolutely. And once you get out of the witness protection program, then you yes. can launch full force <laughs> into that. So you just you just gotta go for it. You can't it. be an authority in witness protection program. <laughs> no, and so many people want to compare themselves to the ones in their space that are, you know, really, really doing it. And they're only really oh my doing gosh, it I know they've failed forward. They have gone through a lot more than you. They've probably lost a lot more money than you, time, frustration, all of that. But they've also been doing it a lot longer too. You know, they haven't let that stop them. Yeah. Yeah. um, For a long time, um, Molly, I let uh, all of that stop me. And I was in witness protection program. In fact, I had a picture of me. I'm 64 now. I had a picture of me from when I was 45. Dark hair very thin, not very thin, thin, normal weight. Um, and I use that everywhere for decades, um, like 15 years. And then thank God I had a coach who said, you have to get out there. People have to see you. And I'm that they're going to look at me. I've got gray hair. I'm not thin. And they're going to look at me and go, I'm not going to work with that crazy old lady. And she's like, no, they're not going to. Some will, sure. Those are the ones you want to work with anyway. But the rest are going to go, oh my gosh, I can relate to her. So she gave me a challenge. And that's where the headwear stuff started. Because I literally thought, okay, I'm just going to go out there and be my crazy self. And so I put on a tiara and I just had my pajamas on. I thought, I'm not even going to take my pajamas off. I'm going to put my tiara on. And I did a Facebook Live and I messed up. I literally did what you said. I'm the first time ever. I'm really scared. But here I am. And that's when it took off because everybody was like, love the tiara, love the PJs. Who are you? We want to get to know you. And they told me, they're like, we stopped the scroll because we're like, what is that? (laughs) What is that woman doing? So good. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, with what you have on today, your, your rainbow headband, shoot. I mean, yeah. Anybody (laughs) be like, wait. Is that her hair? Wait, what is that? You know, so you, that's such a great attraction. Are you a bird? Yeah. Is there, is there a, a bird, bird on your head? head? Is there like a, you know, a toucan? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, do it scared. Do it messy. Just like Molly said. I love that. Do it messy. Uh, I also love your message of collaborate, uh, collaboration over competition because Oh my gosh, we can all go so much further. Together we rise higher and faster. Yeah, being on an island by yourself is boring. We all know this. We want friends. We want other people. You know, you want somebody to talk to and you never know, like having different conversations with people. I've had several where I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. How did you come up with that? Like, and then that now gets me on a whole nother train of just thinking bigger or just shifting something or what have you. So you never know, like we're meant to be in community and we're meant to collaborate. The competition part is so, you know, corporate and old school and just, it's old age, you know, you want to be able to step into something fresh and collaborating with other people. You're going to have a a way bigger referral pool. You're going to have more friends. You're going to have just, just more fun in general, you know? And so Mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about like, oh my gosh, well, what about this? And what about where these leads coming from? What about this? If you just take the time to get to know people and pour into people, Mm -hmm. that's going to come, you know, and then also take the time to invest in yourself, invest the time, invest with finances, 
stop thinking that you can always do it on your own. Because if you think that way, then you're on that competition side. You just want to be on your own island, do your own thing. Okay, I'm sure if that works for you, great. But you're going to get lonely at some point and you're going to be frustrated as to why things aren't working. Come over to the collaboration side. A lot more fun, just like Kathy's headband. That screams fun. Like, come work with me, play with me, have fun with me. Like, (laughs) let's let's make this happen. So, yeah, that is um, I love that you caught on to that because a lot of women are, are getting into that. And my show on Instagram called Influence and Conversions, you can see it on my IGTV. That's what it's all about. It's just women collaborating with other women. And it's so much fun to even watch even the people I've interviewed start networking with each other or working with each other. And I'm like, so good, you know, because I made that one decision of I want to highlight other people. And because of that, now other people are finding new coaches or finding new friends or finding new business partners or just having the breakthrough moments that they need to. So you never know if your one idea, your one thing, the ripple effect from that is going to be so impactful. You just have to believe in that and know that that's going to happen. Molly, you speak my language. I love what you're sharing. So to wrap this up, anybody who is listening to this and wants to get to know Molly better, wants to find out more about Um, her business and she has several things going on. She has the dream factory team. She has her Instagram. She has the Facebook live that she does with her husband. We're going to have links to everything in our show notes, but Molly, in case they won't want to go grab the show notes right now, can you tell them what's the easiest way to get in touch with you and learn more about you and everything you have going on? Yeah. Well, first of all, Kathy, I just want to say thank you. This has been wonderful. Thank you for opening me up to your community and taking the time to chat. And hopefully people got some takeaways up in there. And the easiest way to get a hold of me um, is probably Instagram, just because the handle is so easy. It's Molly underscore Trotter, T-R-O-T-T-E-R. Super simple. You go in there, you know, send me a message saying you, you heard me on this show and then I would love to be able to connect with you. You know, I just, and I answer all my, my messages to myself. So if it takes a few days, don't be alarmed. There's a lot that's in there, but I love to really be able to connect with people, especially if it's from something like this. Cause it's so cool to see when other things like cross paths. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Are you kidding me? There were tons of takeaways on this. You, the, boom, 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 boom. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, Molly for taking the time to be on the dare to leap podcast today. And um, I appreciate you. I know we're going to be working together more in the future. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I don't even know how to get on Instagram, but you have just gotten me excited to do it. I'm going to get it on my iPhone. I'm going to get on Instagram and I'm going to come follow you and watch what you got going on. I love it. And if you need help, let me know, Kathy. I'm happy to help you. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely need help. Um, I, I have an iPhone. I just, the other day I thought, how do I get on Instagram? I don't even know. Um, so, and now there's that clubhouse thing. Oh my God. I can't, my brain is about to explode with all these new things. Um, true. <laughs> so I'll take it one step at a time. I'll get on Instagram. There you so, go. I'll look forward to seeing you there. All right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then.